Habari Ghani, Imani. Habari Ghani, Imani. Greetings. This is Doc Ock coming to you live again with the last of our Kwanzaa Minutes for 2020. We come today with the final principle of Imani. Imani means faith. And on the last day of Kwanzaa, the seventh day, we light the seventh candle, the last of the green candles, last of the big time spenders, if you want to think of it like that. And of course, we have to have a proverb for Imani. And our proverb today is, I trust in Allah, but I tie my camel. And that's an Islamic proverb. Our proverbial poem, I call, I tie my camel. I have faith. The moon will set and the sun will rise. I trust in Allah, but I tie my camel. No justice, no peace. I want peace and I believe in justice. I trust in Allah, but I tie my camel. Faith without works is dead. If you have faith that a better day is coming, then you have to work to make it come true. I trust in Allah, but I tie my camel. A new day is dawning. Every minute of every hour, it's up to us to make it better or worse. I trust in Allah, but I tie my camel. And there we have it. All seven principles. Umoja, unity. Kujichagalia, self-determination. Ujima, Collective work and responsibility. Ujama, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose. Kuumba, creativity. And last but not least, Imani, faith. That we can do what others have done, that we actually can do for self, that we do have a brain, that we are intelligent, that we do have. Um, the ability, the will, the stamina, the patience, and the faith, not just to make it from one day to the next, but to make it into the future and a brighter day. Peace out, y'all. Tutanana, Kesho. Um, over this, these next few days, between now and next week. But the second thing, finally, is this, and Karen has already laid it out. I don't really need to add anything to that. I just want to say that for many years, um, uh, an organization I was able to join as a young man when I was in Columbus, Ohio, going to school, grad school and law school, the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations. Uh, there was a brother named, there named Mariba Kelsey, who's now, he's from Atlanta, he's back in Atlanta. Uh, he and his family, um, started something called the African Center for Study and Worship in Columbus. And that 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 collective, Tawi Village and the, the Afrocentric Personal Development Shop, independent black institutions. They had a storefront in East Columbus that we would meet at every Friday night. We'd sit in there three, four, five hours reading, discussing, debating, folks from the neighborhood, community. That was really my intellectual grounding that whole time I was at Ohio State. It wasn't in the classroom, although there were some great professors and I had access to the library and the Frank Hale Black Culture Center, my man Larry Williamson and them. But it was really East Columbus that gave me that trajectory. And one thing we've been doing and talking about in ASCAC for many years, we have a building fund, is that we need an independent physical space. And in my mind, it's going to be a space that can accommodate 100,000 books that will be a big enough building or set of buildings with plenty of land so that we can have summer institutes so that children can come and learn how to do oral history so that we can convene, have put up a tent, barbecue, cook, go inside, plan, plot, send things out, record things like this. And that it won't be just one place. We have one in Mississippi, Alabama. I always think about the South in particular. And those places will be the places. And this isn't HBCUs. This is where I'm in. It's not historically black colleges because for all the good HBCUs that have done and do, I work at one and that's a deliberate choice. I work, I work in black spaces. I made that choice and I will always make that choice. They still 
are, are hardwired into a rhythm that we need to be able to have other places that are completely distinct from those places. Because our resources, we need to have places where our resources are completely controlled by us, supported by us, and where a six-year-old girl, a 14-year-old boy, somebody comes in and says, here's my $5 subscription service. I'm a member of this collective. I'm coming down for three weeks. I'm coming to sit at the feet of elders. I'm coming to show you how I can flip this into this next song that's going to make a million dollars. And I'm showing you how we're going to connect all this. And I know it all because I have a place to go to to sit for three weeks. Are there models? Yes, there are models. One of them is Per Ankh in Senegal, our brother uh, Ayikwe Arma, uh, who has developed something like that in Senegal, the Writers Collective, the Cultural Collective there. And there are but others. The but thing finally is this, and Karen has already laid it out. I don't really need to add anything to that. I just want to say that for many years, um, an organization I was able to join as a young man when I was in Columbus, Ohio, going to school, grad school and law school, the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations. Uh, there was a brother named their name, Mariba Kelsey. Now he's from Atlanta. He's back in Atlanta. Uh, That's the Baba. Hey. Um, started something called the African Center for Study of Worship in Columbus. And that connected Tawi Village. What? Afrocentric Personal Development Shop. Independent black institutions. Independent black. I put on for my city. 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 Man, hey, man, I love when we get, oh, man, I get hyped. Woo! Let me calm down and we come back and we're going to talk about this. Oh, put on for my city. Put on for my city. We've been working. All right, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Hot Tim. I want to remind you that you are now standing in the congregation of the mighty, the home of the stubborn minority, a place where you build, where your hustle builds muscle. This is Tiami Journey Media, right? And I'm your host, Brother Hot Tim. Family, listen, let me just say this, man. I am so proud of my brother, Greg Kamati Carr. Um... Originally out of Tennessee, coming from Tennessee State to Ohio State, I think. And I watched this brother go for his master's in black studies and, and go through law school at the exact same time. And what the brother's talking about right here is some true nation building, establishing a territory where we could define ourselves for ourselves. Raising funds to make sure that we are able to take care and provide a safe space so that our children can come into their fullness, where our people can come into their fullness. And it's something that is very possible, right? It's just a matter of us supporting each other. Now, this is what we talk about all the time because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. And then you, you also hear about him talking about sitting at the feet of elders and listening right but not only just listening but taking that taking those stories and taking that information and being able to compose intellectual property books e-courses this is the stuff that we're talking about a Giami journey now he might not be talking about it in that way because he is a bibliophile he loves books he loves a solid book but one of the things we have to be able to do, we have to be able to encompass all worlds. So, of course, we do need a place where we can have a library where we can hold over 100,000 books because I love books, too. I have a nice library myself. It's all in storage right now because I had to downsize to be where I'm at right now. But that does not stop us from still creating other types of intellectual properties. There's nothing wrong with creating ebooks. There's nothing wrong with creating e-courses. There's nothing wrong with having online memberships because right where, where you see him from where we got this recording from is from the Karen Hunter show and they are building 
over there. And I think that many of us should go over there and help. But also, family, you can help support independent media. You can help support Giami Journey Media by checking out our stuff. Right? Not only can you get ebooks on how to develop yourself, how to use ancient wisdom to answer modern problems, you know what I'm saying? How to change your life, right? But you can also create content and we can help you with that. We can help you market it. We can help you build the commercials so that you can go on and promote it. All you got to do is be willing to put the work in, learn how to learn how to do it and be willing to put the work in and we can help you. Right, right here at Giami Journey Media, we are doing real nation building. You heard him call out um, our Baba, Dr. Mariba Kelsey. You heard him call out the African Center for Study and Worship. You heard those of you that's been listening to us for a while. You know that I be big up in the African Center for Study and Worship. I be big and big up in the Baba. I also be bigging up Tawi Village, right? Because Giami Journey, we are a tribe in a village called Tawi, right? I also want to show this video for those people who sometimes forget the work that we're doing here in Columbus. Now, I'm just stressing the Columbus piece because he mentioned the Columbus piece because he was here and he was able to partake in our family. And it was, in a sense, our family that helped guide him in a direction in which he's going and making great strides, right? But I also I'm stressing this because one of the key pieces that he talked about in this conversation, and you can check this out. This is um, um, in class with Carr on Karen Hunter's show. You go and check her out. Find her, find her, find her because she has an excellent show. But one of the major pieces that he talks about on here, right, is dropping in a sense, dropping a bucket where you are, right? You're not in Columbus. You might be in Cleveland. You might be in Dayton. You might be in uh, some city that I don't even have a name for. But can you start where you are? There are elders where you are in most cases. There are other people of like mind where you are. Can you start building where you are? Right? See, because we got people talking about taking over the world when we have not taken over our neighborhoods. We are not taking over our blocks. You can't take over a big thing if you have not handled the small things leading to the big thing. And the small things are yourself, your family, your tribe, your village, your community, your city. I put it on for my city. I put it on for my city. See, I can't talk about. See, because I would love to be able to take the mantle of nation builder. But actually, I'm not a nation builder. And most of you out there are not nation builders. What you are actually, what you actually are is a tribe builder at this point in time. Some of y'all might still be at the family building stage, right? Because you're not building on the national level. Most of us are not built on the national level. But can we build and make an impact in the small places where we are? Because your small place could connect with my small space. And it could connect with Kamathi's small space. And it could connect with Sister Karen Hunter's small space. And it could connect with that brother's small space. And that sister's small space. And that sister's small space. To where eventually we have multiple tribes building up multiple communities, building up multiple cities where we are not, where we are controlling things politically, economically, educationally, socially. It's a definite, it's definitely doable. So family, check us out at GME Journey. Check out what we offer and how we can help you move towards your goal as far as tribe building as far as even if you want to keep the title nation builder or whatever you want, whatever we can help you with that check out uh go to our free gnjecourse.com check out check us out see what we can offer you see what we can help you with you want to put something together we could go on and give you we could go on and give you a consultation and let you know what we could do for you you want to put together an ebook we got you you want to put together the e-course we got you you want to put together um, um, a social media campaign. We got you. You know what I'm saying? Let us help you build your tribe. Or as other people say, build your brand. 
right? Because Giami Journey is a tribe, but at the same time, it's a brand, right? It's something that we have that we can share with the world. What do you have that you can share with the world, right? Because you're the hero in this story. You're the hero in your story. We just trying to help you move because every hero, check this out, every hero has a guide. Every hero goes to somebody that gives them advice and gives them the tools so that they can overcome what it is they're struggling with. Allow G and, G and, J, uh, G and J Media to help you with that. This is Brother Hot Tim, and I am out. Watch the next video. Watch the next video. Watch the next video. No, I'm just joking, family. Family, thank you for joining us. Be sure to catch us on the next video, family. Peace. Watch the next video. Watch. Right out there in those streets where she is. How you doing, Shorty? Hey, Ted. I just saw your mother inside the restaurant. Yeah, I just saw my way down there. There's some bread on. Shorty, the word is on vine to turn. You're not making your pay off to the cops. <laughs> That's the rumor, Turk. You uh, mind if I give you a little advice? No, go ahead. Why don't you just quit dealing all together? Oh, man, you know I can't do that, Turk. It's the problem. You ever stop to think what would happen in these streets if we cut off the flow of drugs altogether? White folks control your neighborhood through drugs and you dealing? So what you gonna do now? Give me a sermon? Daniel! No. No, no sermon, Shirley. I just thought I'd ask. You uh, mind if I give you a little advice? No, I'm Why don't you just put your all together? Man, you know I can't do that. Turn this up. You understand to think what would happen in these streets if we cut off the flow of drugs all together? White folks. My man. My man. You dealer. So what you gonna do now? Give me a second. No, 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 sir. I just. Now, the frustration I feel, because that is a model of a lot of conversations people shut down good information because they say oh what you're about to preach me a sermon now you know everything no but the key piece that you have to remember that we have to remember as a people that we do very little if we don't get a sermon we can take it all the way back to haiti the whole Haitian revolution jumped off from a religious ritual. I'm quite sure somebody gave a sermon. Gabriel Prosser. Quite sure somebody was giving sermons. Right? Nat Turner was a pastor. We know he was giving sermons. Uh, let's bring it all the way up to the civil rights movement. Full of people that gave sermons. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, Martin Luther King was one of those pastors that gave a sermon that moved the masses right we go to the nation of islam full of ministers one of the famous being malcolm x who gave a lot of sermons I bring it up to today where we are today right think about it farrakhan gives some nice sermons so it's kind of like we shut each other down with this whole sermon idea and shorty with his dumb ass I can, oh my God, surely make me mad. But I, I did like his pantsuit. I'm thinking about bringing the pantsuit back with the long collar, you, you, with the long, you, you see that? I think I might bring that back. And I think that's the only thing I can find that I like about that. All right, family, so right here we got one of my favorite movies of all time, and I'm going to explain eventually on one of these videos why this is my favorite movie of all time. It's called The Spook Who Sat By The Door, 
And it's very, very, very important that we go through some of the lessons in here because they are lessons that we constantly deal with today in this world. I mean, a, a lot of shit has changed. It only changed in look. But many of the rules of life still apply. And if you listen to the sermon that Shorty, bless his heart, bless his heart. I don't think he got no more than about a 20 or $30 a week habit. And that ain't no habit. Shut up, Mama Duncan. I can hear a ringing in my ear. Right? But anyway, this is what we're going to do. I want us to break it down because basically... What Turk or Mr. Freeman was talking about in there was controlling territory. And we often talk about that on Giami Journey. You can't have a family. You can't have a tribe. You can't have a community. You can't have a city unless you have marked out territory. All things have to have territory. And what Turk was talking about in that scene was establishing a territory and controlling what comes in and what goes out of that 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 community right we have to face the fact family that a lot of us are playing revolutionary a lot of us are playing nation builder a lot of us are are are, are doing these grandiose things or think we're doing these grandiose things when in fact we are doing nothing but walking around the plantation including myself the goal is to break out of the off the plantation how do you break off the plantation you break off the plantation by taking control of the plantation making it yours sticking your claims and making sure you control everything that comes in now the first place we start with that as a people is our minds right now our minds are open so anybody can come in with a crazy idea stake their flag in there and everything is cool Right. And we all everybody do as thou will do what you want to do, blah, blah, blah. But how do you organize with that type of shit? How do you really take over a community with that? Because so, one of the things that you have to understand that when you go into different communities, we hear people like, well, the, 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 we hear about all these other groups. These other groups share culture and they share ideas about that culture. But in our community, what happens is we got so many different ideas about who we are, about where we are, about when we are, that we can't align those ideas so that we can empower ourselves to overcome and push out those that are not serving our interests. Family, there is no way that we could take control of our community doing and allowing anything in. That includes thoughts, that includes drug, uh, drugs, that includes the education, that includes... We have to be able to control all of that coming into us. We got to be able to control all of that going into our children. We got to control all of that. And that's true nation building. You don't build up a nation so that other people could come in and take advantage of it. You don't build up a nation so other people could come in and take from you. Right? So Turk said... Have you ever realized that if we cut off the flow of drugs, <laughs> what would happen? Do you not understand that white folks control your community through drugs and they control you through the dealing of drugs? Right? Now, I want you to understand that often, if you look at the movies and you look at the his at history, Traders were often funded by other people's money. When other people's money becomes more important, more important than your culture, you will always lose. When you have individuals that are able to be financed by outside sources to act as mercenaries for them, they don't even have to give the mercenaries directions. Here, it causes much, basically, they didn't even say causes as much confusion as you can. But when you unleash people who are outside of the community onto the community, they're not with you mentally, they're not with you educationally, they're not with you spiritually, they don't see the same political things you see, they don't see the same economic state that you see, it causes havoc in the community. It causes havoc in the area. It causes habit 
in the neighborhood, and it descends from community to neighborhood to just the hood. Many of us, because we have not started training our minds, because we are not living by principles, have given in and started living a mercenary life. And mercenaries never build empires for themselves. They build empires for others. They never build countries for themselves. They build countries for others. And when the mercenaries become a problem to the state that they have helped build, guess what that state does to them? Look it up in history. And even worse, even worse for us, a lot of us with the mercenary mind state. I'll do anything for money. If you got somebody in your crew right now that say they will do anything for money, you need to go on and eliminate them out your crew. But hey, I'm on some tribe building shit right now. Listen to me, family. If you want to learn how to build a tribe, I am going to invite you to take our e-course. Go to freegnjecourse.com. Feel free to hit up the video with comments so that we can go and have this discussion, right? So that we can really start building, at least those that want to build. Because we got some people that's really benefiting off the confusion that's going on in our community right now. A whole lot of people. As a matter of fact, we'll lose a lot of jobs. You know what I'm saying? But hey, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, right? So family, thank you for joining us. I am your host, Brother Hi Tim. And this has been another one of those adventures of brother hot tim and this one is called territory what is your territory where is your territory where does it start ask yourself some of these questions yo this is just a thought peace watch the next video watch the next video Watch the next video. No, I'm just joking, family. Family, thank you for joining us. Be sure to catch us on the next video, family. Peace. Watch the next video. Watch. Hello, Miss Duggan. Hey, Mr. Freeman, hi. Why don't you join me? Good. Listen, that looks good. It is delicious. You want to try some? Mm -hmm. Miss Duggan, how's your son Shorty doing? Oh, Shorty's doing just fine. He got a job now, making good money. In fact, he just bought me a color television set. But I hear there's not only running numbers, pushing drugs. Hey, he's hooked. No, he ain't no real junkie. Sure, he shoots up now and then. But I don't think he got no more than about a twenty or thirty dollar a week habit. And that ain't no habit. Well, did you ever think that he uh, could end up in jail? Not unless somebody turned the heat on in the precinct. And then I can't hardly see why they'd be after Shorty because he ain't into it that much. Shorty ever think about finishing at least high school? No. He don't want no parts of school. You know how them teachers are. Well, without an education, what's he going to do? Mr. Freeman, you know. Ain't nothing out there for us. But right out there in those streets where Shorty is. Man, this type of behavior burns my ass my god when we gonna stop rationalizing bullshit my god we've been doing it for a very long time i see because this is an old ass movie. all right family right now we are looking at a clip from a movie from 1969 a classic uh, uh I call it a Mac movie necessity. Join in Giamma, you have to see this movie. We have to discuss this movie. And the name of the movie is The Spook Who Sat By The Door. <laughs> Man, I love this damn movie. 
I love it. I often cut it into uh, my show, and I'm very excited to figure to have figured out how to get in and cut up the movie. So this scene, I call it Mama, because this Mama and the behavior she's exhibiting is not just the she behavior; it's also a he behavior. And this is one of the major things that stops us from growing as individuals and growing as a tribe. Now, let me be very clear, because this 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 hits right on the tribe piece, because a lot of people get uncomfortable when I use the term tribe. And I can understand that. But a tribe, a tribe from the idea that I'm using, right, is a organization, a group of individuals, a group of families that come together so that they can build together, which means that we have to be able to hold each other responsible. Now, what you saw with this mother was that she was totally rationalizing all of her son's behaviors. Now, the brother is coming in trying to assist and trying to get hold of her so that they could work together to help her son. But rather than grasping for the help, she don't think anything is wrong. Why? I mean, we could kind of understand, you know, ain't nothing out here for us. You heard that then, ain't nothing out here for us. But we have somebody who has come from the very same situation that your son is in. You know him. The neighborhood knows him. It's Turk, right? So he may be able to help your son get out of the situation that he's in. Now, many of us had this type of shit in our life. Where either somebody's doing it for us or we're doing it for somebody else. We rationalize their fuckery and bitchcraft and it usually turns around and ends up biting us in the ass. Let me give you an example. This shorty character is the same character that ends up getting shot in the alley and causes the riots that cause Turk to have to move his plans forward. Right? Mama rationalized this boy's behavior. At his funeral, probably crying and pulling her hair out, talking about how good of a boy he was, and he don't really have it. Did y'all hear that? He ain't really got no, it ain't really no habit. It's only $20, $30 a week. Like, what? How much, how much is $20 or $30 in 1969 money? That's a lot of money. I'm just letting y'all know right now. But he ain't no real junkie. She rationalizing. And what we have to stop doing is rationalizing and, and, in a sense, defending behaviors that are not good for us as well as other people, especially when in your tribe and in your family. It's hard. I know it's hard. But if you're going to move to the next level, you're going to have to do it. And you're going to stop have to you're going to have to stop rationalizing some of the behaviors that you have and some of the behaviors that other people have around you that may be holding you back. I'm just saying winners run with winners. You know what I'm saying? In Giami, we trying to build a tribe of champions. I'm not I'm not trying to pull nobody along. Right. So. Like I said, if you need help in this type of stuff, right, and you, and thinking about it, talking about it, you know, hit us up at GME Journey Media. Join us. Join the tribe at gnj.media. That's gnj.media. Also, if you want to learn a little bit more about the foundation of Giame, go to freegnjecourse.com. We will be coming out with offers soon to, get, to help you with some coaching as far as your um, digital business. You know what I'm saying? As far as getting your, you know, building up your your hits on um, social media and and other platforms, creating videos, podcasts, and etc. Family, we've been doing it a long time. I want to share the information with you. So go on and join us on the journey and let's build, build, build. But don't call me if you if you ain't got a habit if it ain't you know what i'm saying if if you like shorty and you ain't it ain't a real habit it ain't like you're a real chunky or ain't you know don't call me if you like that you know if you ain't got a real habit you know just one just a little habit you don't no call me if you serious i ain't got time 
for tagalongs and hang-ons. We got to build. We got a very limited time, and we got to get busy. All right, this is Brother Hot Tim. I am out. Watch the next video. Watch the next video. Watch the next video. No, I'm just joking, family. Family, thank you for joining us. Be sure to catch us on the next video, family. Peace. Watch the next video. Watch. And I, I think we also have to remember that, and, and this I, I remind us of this because when you don't have something, you don't know what you're missing. Like if you've never, if you've never eaten cookies before, you don't know that they exist. You don't know that they, and so as a people, there are certain things that we no longer have that were forcibly taken from us that would have been able to nip things like this in the bud, right? So when we talk about rites of passage programs or rites of passage, and if you think back to Ruth, either the old version or the new version, you see that Kunta, he doesn't just get to be a man. Right. He, in fact, if he doesn't go through his rite of passage training, which is an extensive mind, body, spirit process, it is not just a how much can you bench. It's not how fast can you run. It's the definition of manhood is to be a protector. It's, and how do you demonstrate that? You do these exercises. It's can you go? I mean, I mean, it was days and weeks. It's a process that you had to go through to ensure that your transition from boyhood to manhood was not just healthy and holistic, but was going to produce men who were going to be able to bear the standard that the community determined as it pertains to what makes a man, right? So I don't even know what to say. I just feel good that somebody else is putting the call out. Have you been through your rites of passage? Oh man, for years and years and years and years and years, I've been on this journey, family, Giami journey, and the thing that sparked us into doing what we do is this whole concept of rites of passage. Um, the transition from one phase to another phase. There was a rites of passage for young men and a rites of passage for young ladies. Now, not my fault, I take that back, let's be clear. Because what happened in America is that our, court, our, our West Asian teachers teach us to segment everything. So we, what we did with the rites of passage movement was that we focused the movement on the children. When in fact, rites of passage is a life thing. There's different phases in your life that you need some assistance with. Right, and the rites of passage program provides that for the community, and it helps shape and mold the men and women that will be able to move into the leadership of the society. In a sense, the rites of passage is the 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 societal womb in which men and women are born. Children are born through the connection of men and women, and they come and enter the world through the womb of the woman, right? And men and women are born from the womb of society, all right? Now, with the rites of passage process, which we constantly talk about, I mean, because really, Gianni Journey is a rites of passage organization, right? We are a tribe tribe with cultural ways and, and, and certain initiations and rituals and ceremonies that we take our members through. Now, the key piece in Rites of Passage is to remember that it's about building and strengthening the culture and protecting the culture and developing individuals that not only can protect the culture, but even expand the culture and bring new ways and new thoughts into the culture that will energize the people. Now, Rites of Passage is broken down very simply into maybe about five, well, I'm gonna say four or five states, let's see. The first one is, of course, the call. 
the call for the rites of passage. There's a change in your life. There's a major change coming. There's a biological change that happens for some people for their rites of passage to begin. And when, for example, when a young person starts moving and a voice start changing and they start getting to hear in certain parts of their body or whatever, there is a signal, a call that this individual has to start a venture. Now, I want you to understand because the last few videos we've been talking about the importance of being summoned and called right now. The root word to call, or at least I was taught, was a call basically comes from the term vocation, right? Vocation, vocal, a vocal call, right? Your vocation, what you're called to do in this world. And there's a call that goes out, right? Uh, uh, either the material or spiritual. Um, on a, there's a certain thing that happens. An individual has this call. Now, the first thing that happens once the individual accepts this call is the separation phase. Separation phase. Individual is separated from society and basically taken into the world, right? A world created by the society to introduce them to the secrets of the culture, the secrets of the culture. Then they are initiated, and part of the initiation process is that the child has to die for the adult to exist. So the child has part of the initiation, they have to give up part of themselves so that they can move into their new self. From here, they move from the initiation phase into the reintroduction phase, okay? They are reintroduced to the society as a new person. The child that left is never coming back. And this young person or this older person will come into the community and be able to add to it. The rites of passage will help change it, I mean, will help will help develop the individual on all five parts of their being. Intuition, mental, emotional, spiritual, and last but not least, the physical, so that they can form the fist to destroy enemies or work together as the hand to build up society. Family, the question that I have for you is, have you experienced the rites of passage? your community's rights of passage, your society's rights of passage, your tribe's rights of passage. And if so, how has it geared you and prepared you to move into conquering life, to getting and acquiring space and time, not only for yourself, but for your people? I want to thank y'all for tuning in, man, oh man, oh man. Listen, I am really enjoying doing these, and I hope that you are finding it useful. Or come and join us over at gnj.media. It's popping up on the screen right now. It keeps on popping up. I just can't stop it. it GNJ just has taken over my screen. gnj.media, come join us. We're building our own social media networking site. We don't want everybody. We just want you. Come over and join us. Join the tribe family. Those that are interested in the stuff that we're talking about here from rites of passage to why we do the daily toast to, uh, you know what I'm saying, how does, our, how does the system work? You know what I'm saying? Check us out on freegnjecourse.com. And family, be on the lookout because we're going to be putting together packages to teach people how to stream how to podcast, how to start a blog, how to build your own site. You understand what I'm saying? How to develop an e-course, how to develop an e-book, how to market it. We're coming out with all that stuff because we want to help expand our Ujima network based on, this, based on the, the idea laid out by Brother Philip Shock Matthews. All right, but yo, this is Brother High Tim, and it's been a pleasure. Make sure you like and share, and let's keep building. I'm out. I think I broke my, I broke my headphone. Check.
Are you okay? Are you, are you? Annie, are you okay? Annie. Annie, are you okay? Watch the next video. Watch the next video. Watch the next video. No, I'm just joking, family. Family, thank you for joining us. Be sure to catch us on the next video, family. Peace. Watch the next video. Watch. Sure to bring back biological beings from beyond, be looted by beast blast, famous be gone. So the clan cooperated and Chester was chosen. Now the colors coordinated and chapters are closing. Despite of democracy, a devilish discourse demonstrating diplomacy of a demonic beat force. So earn everyone, the end is engaged, incited by the East, enlightenment's enraged. Forget false friends for the fighting facility, for real.
them foes cause they preach your fertility. Get going in the game. Growth is your goal. Giving God the glory to gather your soul. Hear me. Heaven is a home for the have and have nots. Harbor by the hopes and the heroes of hip hop. Hello. I insist, I instruct ideas to invent. Just jettison the jokes of juniors and justice. Juveniles join Jake's in jail and just kiss. Killing kind kindreds of kings with the knights. Connecticut the kitchen but capped on the kite. Let them loose, Lucifer, liberate the light. See, we label these lows but leaders of the light. Look, Look man, man is magnetic. magnetic. Meant to move mass. Man brains mold mental maintained by math. Never, Never needed, needed negativity and nigga five nations. Nice in our nature. We nourish negotiation. Our outlook, of course, optimistic. optimistic. Others off track, off record, off and miss it. The proof is in the pudding. Power positions will penetrate the past and populate the petition. When you quit the quadrant with the qualified quote, it's queer when the question doesn't quantify hope and, and the, the rest, rest realize that the rich is real. Is real. Respect righteous rebels in the routes revealed. Simply said, the system still stinks. It's sad when the seed sitting in school with a shank. Terrorists telling the truth, you can tell by the tear. Turn on your television, terrorists are here. You Usually undetected and in uniform, without unity, U.S. makes us unicorns vanish. But the verses will vindicate the verdict. See voices from the vent verify violence. Why, when we want a world of His will, will we weave works of evil in the works we will? Explain executions. Examples exist. So get some extra ex lax and call the exorcist. It's the year of the young, and the youth will not yield. Yep, we all yelling, and you yellow, so we telling that you was the zone. And I hit it on the way. We grab the zebras from the zoo and head to Zimbabwe. Zulu.
Greetings. I am Mama Mawusi Ashakir, and I am here to discuss with you this African Liberation Day, how education can be a means and a mode for our survival. Educating our future in the face of crisis. That's the name of my, and the topic of my discussion today. Very important. As we are now sitting here facing this global crisis, we're in the midst of a very pivotal crossroads, one that offers us the opportunity to take ourselves back. I am Mama Mawusi, I am Ashakir, and I am a cultural custodian. 25 years, I'm a 25 year homeschooler of my own seven children and four grandchildren. I'm the founder and guardian director of four nation building institutions. The Body Temple Institute of Holistic Health and Herbal Studies for which I train herbalist and naturopathic healers to be able to answer and address emergent situations and health maintenance issues in our own community. The Rising Academy of the Sun, for which I educate children in our community to be able to reach uh, 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 learning levels and to come into adulthood with skills and trades. The Mothership, for which I train birth workers, childbirth educators, doulas, and fertility strategists in order to uh, resolve and literally create uh, uh, help to manifest health in women and children. Daughters of the Clay, Rites of Passage, for which I help girls through initiatory rites and to, in their coming into womanhood. I have been working in our African community in Cincinnati, Ohio since 1985 with various organizations over time. Not only have I worked, but I have also benefited from the conscious community. I'm also grateful for that. The topic and concept of my discussion today is how we can benefit from social collapse, how we can take advantage of social collapse. In this, in this time, we need to organize our time, organize our family, organize our energy, organize our communal resources, and organize our money. In doing that, we'll understand how much money are we uh, putting into a global structure that is collapsing? How much of our communal resources have we turned over to or become comfortable with seeing coming from this collapsing society? How much of our energy has this society consumed over the years? and bring our family in so that we can begin answering those needs for each other. So we can begin answering, uh, finding resources or generating resources or even creating those resources ourselves uh, together in the family. Organizing our time in order to be able to create resources, to build resources, to grow resources, to make the resources ourselves, and then to begin to circulate those resources amongst each other more times before we even consider going outside of our family surf circle. When we organize our family to contribute to our own, free, our own freedom, we create a family social system. We develop a plan for sustainability. So I'm addressing how we do this 
And I'm also addressing this in the midst of the fact that my family is doing this for itself. So I'm sharing with you what we're doing. So we're developing a plan for sustainability. Like how can we sustain this even if the system comes back? Even if it comes back up, how can we continue to sustain this anyway? Even if society comes back, how can we sustain family social systems that we create, that we need? For instance, we need a ride. We need vehicles. We need to be able to travel. We need food. So, so we create a food co- food uh, co-op where we all put in and we get cases of food and then we can share it together within each other. We need child care. We need education. So therefore, we begin to, um, there's that one person in our family who's a child care provider. So that person can then begin to provide child care for the family, communal family. That communal family will be you, your children, your grandchildren. It may also be some people who are the fam, very close family uh, relatives, relatives. You know, those people whom are uh, may not be of blood circle, but yet of consciousness circle. And they are related. So they are related to you. You are all connected. So work and use the talents and skills of each other. Even those people who are not of your bloodline circle, they can even be bridges to where their bloodline circles can also be brought in. And you two as family nation units can then begin working together to provide goods and services with to it, with each other. Um, also, research, research um, self-sufficiency methods of food security, food storage, growing food, and uh, uh, seed saving. Also, self-defense and home safety during these times of social collapse. Very important for us to understand. Um, also, legal defense, understanding your, your grounds, your standing in the law, understanding how it affects you when you're being pulled over or when they're saying forced vaccinations or when you're going into a place and they're saying that you have to wear a mask, you know, or that someone is not. What is that? What is the law in relation to this social um, societal new laws that they're putting into place? Understand what's happening. Also, research health maintenance tips. Pay attention. Well, I think that we are paying so much attention to what the cdc is saying we're paying so much attention they got us looking in all of these different directions but one of the things that is a key concept we need to be looking at is how do we maintain our health this all came about as biological strategies biological warfare biological concepts that are going on viral uh viral uh, a viral issue if such is the case how can we maintain our health Organize a family economic system, a system of saving monies, understanding how will we save monies. Also, creating a susu together where we can circulate monies and then creating monies for loaning. So we're saving in preparation for loaning to those family members within family units within your family to be able to help them to start micro businesses and things like this. Also consider buying properties or real estate. Um, very, very interesting. So I guess I would say consider investing together, you know, uh, as a family unit, as an organized family unit. One of the things that was pushed um, as I've been growing in consciousness is um, organize, organize, organize in the form of get into groups uh, outside of your family, outside of yourself, you know, outside of your community, whatnot, and to organize into these groups of, of political ideology, of social structure or religious structure. But the first structure that we have to understand how to organize is the self, but the second most prioritized structure is your family. And if we bond our family, then it will make more sense to be more, our, our social structures of, and our religious structures, our religious organized structures will then stay together better if we understand the value of being in a family structure. 
especially in the face of crisis. We want to educate our own children, and ultimately, this is what I do. Um, and bringing up the first important points is that without those structures during the time of social collapse, we have to have those structures in place for educating our own. A lot of times that is the issue with people saying, oh, well, I can't homeschool my children. It's because key structures are not in place for you to be able to educate your children, you see. But now we're thrown into this position where they won't be opening up school next year, you know. What happens in the event? that society doesn't come together to be able to address our needs in this coming school year. If such is the case, we're going to be the ones who are educating our own children. If that's the case, that's fine. I have created this PowerPoint presentation to put you in position to be able to do it. What you wanna do is assess your child's intelligence and learning level according to you. Right now, we're working, a lot of people who have used the public school system have uh, accepted and have given over to the public school system in order to tell us their assessment of our children. However, the children have to walk the path that you have established for them. So with that, you need to assess their learning level and their intelligence for walking the path you have, you're getting ready to establish or that you have already walked for them to follow. Okay, you may use the assessments from the public school system, uh, but you need to use your own intelligence as well prior, with priority. Um, begin to collect resources from basic topics such as reading, writing, science, math, things like that. And then also include topics from your life, such as critical thinking skills, self-defense, um, historical heroes, gardening, herbalism, food production, um, health maintenance concepts, law, and African languages. Um, as an African-centered educator, that is a big, big concept and an over, overarching concept in my life. And so with that, African languages and African um, African historical concepts, as well as uh, African critical thinking is vitally important to me. So that's why I included it in this lecture. I just wanted to bring forward this, this, this thought uh, that, um, that, is, that is key. Why is it that we cling so hard to the idea of what we've learned in school that what we've learned in school should be taught despite the fact that we have since forgotten much of what we've learned in school. You know, very much um, we are, we find ourselves, we find ourselves um, finding the educational paradigm for which we have been educated in uh, so key. We look at, we look, hope, we want to, it to be so key, we are holding it so tightly, but many people have been uh, utilizing and creating methods and strategies of self-preservation in their life and how they operate, that we've really forgotten what we learned in our elementary, junior high, and high school years and exchanged it for the self-preservation methods that we're using to survive now. With such being the case, I need you to reestablish what is necessary for the child that you have bared, the child that you are rearing, in order for their survival based upon what you know. Recreate the educational paradigm because that educational paradigm that we learned in school did not prepare us for what we have to deal with in this world. Really plain and simple. Use this time to inculcate an African foundation based upon self-sufficiency. So general resources, these are in general resources to pad out, pad out your um, 
educational uh, um, outlook and it is not uh, educational curriculum they are not necessarily African centered they are in general and they are you'll find these um, online resources links and resources and they are just they will actually put your put your whole help put your help to um create drills and things like this for your child so we have math drills they are they have a very extensive um worksheet um collection on everything from um from the foundations of math with math with um addition subtraction multiplication division fractions all the way up to geometry and algebra and i think maybe some calculus but i'm not sure flipped math has geometry algebra calculus and trigonometry uh and and foundational uh math math is fun also has foundational math at all learning levels a language arts um free worksheets on you'll find free worksheets on all learning levels at greatschools.org um english grammar um and also all learn and you'll find that um uh on this youtube channel that i found this uh brother is teaching uh english learn english grammar um and i i use it um reading comprehension very interesting uh um reworks dot com i'm sorry dot org uh, that's a really good one and then uh, free worksheets very important that we have free worksheets i also i really wanted to find something that made it very simple and easy for you to fill in where public school has dropped us off or, or has evicted us <laughs> or it has evicted many people um but um also check out languages this is something that your children can do themselves duolingo and busu these are places teach various different languages um even kiswahili uh, is on Duolingo, and that's something that is really um, a good place to start. It's very important for us to um, tap in. It is very important for us to tap in to our children right now and to help them to navigate. It's very important to tap into our children and help them to navigate this transition because of how society has presented itself, uh, it seemed as if it would continue without disruption. And it has disrupted our children's lives. And in some cases, it has changed their path of graduation. It has, um, uh, it took away their ability to experience a graduation it has changed their whole thing so we have to help them to understand what we have grown to understand which is that um everything must change everything comes to a change and societies do come to a glass hit a wall and they do consume they do end and so with that we have to prepare them for that we have to prepare them for what is coming what could possibly be coming and if in fact um they are going to change and not open schools this next school year we need to be talking to each other to support each other in this change um there are a whole lot of things that are coming up and that are uncertain when we do not know what they will do then we need to prepare for what we will do and we need to make that preparation based upon what the resources, the tools, the talents, the skills, and the ability that we have. We need to draw upon our own strength and our ancestral knowledge in order to move forward. Self-sufficiency was always what was desired for us. And so with that, let's take this opportunity to step forward in that. I am Mama Mawusi Ashakir of the Ashakir Family Nation, and I'm grateful to be included amongst the African Liberation Day speakers, and I'm grateful to have been um, placed in position by Baba Tunde, and I am, because we are. Many blessings.
My name is Dylan Pritchett, and I'm a storyteller. I live in Newport News, Virginia. There once was a mouse who every night would do the same thing. He'd crawl through the hole, go up into the kitchen, walk around to living rooms all around looking for some droppings from that day. Well, the farmer had noticed it. And the farmer puts a mouse trap right in the corner, a little piece of cheese. When the mouse came out that night, he was walking around in the room and he came to the mouse trap. He said, there's a mouse trap in the house. I got to go tell somebody. So the mouse went out and he went to where the chickens were. And the chickens were out there, back, 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 packing, packing, and packing. And the mouse said, hey, there's a mouse trap in the house. The chicken said, bark, I ain't worried about that, bark. I got to sit out here and sit on these eggs, bark. I got to worry about packing. I hope they throw some corn out of here, bark. That mouse trap, bark, that's your problem. The mouse went, hmm. So the mouse kept walking around and the mouse walked around and saw the pig. He said, hey pig, hey pig, there's a mouse trap in the house. The pig went, I ain't gonna worry about that. That's your problem. I just hope I got enough slop out here. I ain't worrying about that. That mouse trap, that's your problem. The mouse went, hmm. Mouse saw the cow, went out to where the cow was grazing. And he said, hey cow, hey cow, there's a mouse trap in the house. The cow went, I ain't worried about that. Nah, no problem. <laughs> they come out here, pull on me every day. <laughs> that mouse trap, that mouse trap, <laughs> that's your problem. The mouse went, hmm. This went on all day long. All day long, the mouse going from animal to animal to animal to animal, telling them, hey, there's a mouse trap in the house. And all of the animals said, that's your problem. Well, one morning, the farmer's wife was sweeping the kitchen, forgot about the mouse trap, and she swept over in the corner, didn't see that mouse trap, and that mouse trap clapped down on her big toe. Heard of something bad. She went, she laid down, the farmer called the doctor, the doctor came in, the doctor said, it don't look good. And that, turn, that toe turned green and purple, and then it, Looked like it was going to fall off, but before the toe got that bad, farmer's wife died. Well, you know, everybody was showing up to the funeral. But, you know, they had to get there early, this way in the country. So people showed up real early to that funeral. And the farmer looked around. The farmer said, Lord, have mercy. All these people in the house, all of them, I got to be hospitable. I got to, I got to... Give him some breakfast or something. But Lord, where am I going to get all this food? So he looked out. He said, oh, I'll go out here and get some of these eggs. So he went up and he lifted that chicken up and he got some eggs. But then he stopped and went, chicken. We can have some chicken and waffles. We're going to have some chicken and waffles. So he grabbed all the chickens up and he took them inside and got some boiling water, scalded them, plucked them and, and cooked them up. But he said, Lord, I got to. I got to have something else, because everybody, everybody, and he looked out, there was that pig. He said, we got to have some bacon. So he went out there and he killed a pig. So them people had bacon, chicken and waffles, and some, some, uh, and some eggs for breakfast. It was a real sad, sad funeral, because the farmer's wife, she was a good woman. But after the funeral, you know what they had to do. It was time for the repast. Everybody showed up for the repast at the farmer house. And they sitting there and the farmer sitting there. He looking around. He said, Lord, there's more people here. He said, well, at least I, 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 at least I killed a pig. So I got some pork chops and got a ham. He said, but I ain't going to feed all these people. I got to. And he looked out in the field and there was the cow. So he went out and he killed the cow. Them people ate hamburgers, steaks, fajitas. They ate everything. And that was it. After they ate, they all went home. And that's the end of the story. You know what the moral of the story is? There's a mouse trap in the house. And what you don't think is your problem, is your problem. What this got to do with Kwanzaa? 
Well, if you got people that don't understand unity, that's your problem. If you got people that don't understand community, that's your problem. If you got un people who don't understand what the injustices upon their people are, that today the injustices are just as unjust as in the past, that's your problem. There's a mousetrap in the house. And through the principles, if we learn the principles, if we learn Ujama, if we learn Ujama, if we learn Nia, we will be able to understand and come together collectively to fight that mousetrap. Because there is a mousetrap in the house. Banga la pia, ashe, ashe. Banga la pia, ashe, ashe. Banga la pia, ashe, ashe. Banga la pia.
voter message went out. We were ready. We had already left. But you know we were on both sides. Yes. Some of us was on the north. Now they go. That's marching stuff. And some yeah. of us is on the south. But some of us was on the, what we would say, uh, we're out on the outs, living on our own in the swamp and other places, celebrating our own life. A lot of those were called maroons or others. And All right. So, as this story is told, it all depends on who's telling it. Now, when we tell it, we tell it from a different point of view. Of course, it's our point of view. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation, what it did is confiscate property from those states that were succeeded from the Union, let's put it that way. That we're in rebellion against the United States. There were how many states that uh, it didn't affect and they kept their uh, property? How many states? Uh huh. Was it one? Nah. Was it two? Nah. Was it three? Nah. Was it four? Nah. Was it five? And they're all the way in the north. So five states, even though the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, didn't affect their property. So they got to keep their land, their cows, their chickens, their house, the furniture, the swing, the crops, everything, even the people who work there for free. But in the southern states, that did not happen because the Emancipation Proclamation document confiscated the property. But it could not it could not, it could not, it could not confiscate property without the federal troops going on the land and doing it. could only be confiscated with federal troops set foot on the land for the property, thereby invoking the order. But the people who knew they were coming and knew whose property it was, they said it was theirs, put up a resistance because the war was still going on. So it kept fighting in order for Union troops to confiscate the property and do whatever they were going to do with the property. The Union troops had to be on the land. That's why. That's why. That's why. It took so long to get to Texas. Because they had to yield. 
Indian Army had to fight its way there. Now I want to make a point. Most of us were gone.
say Jew, you say G. Jew. Jew. When I say Jew, you say G. Jew. You did it right, sister. Yeah. Yeah. For Baragani, Balm Skin & Co. is the true definition of self-care, self-love, and repeat. We are what we create in this life. Balm Skin & Co. chooses to create something innovative and unforgettable. Check out our website for more information. Spirit Over Flesh LLC is a wellness-based business where we heal through words. I'm Tiandra. I'm the founding servant leader. It is a black-owned, woman-owned business that was founded in Ohio, but that can serve the world. Um, through virtual sessions, either by phone or video conference, we have a conversation. We always start with a 15-minute consult where... We just make sure that I learn a little bit about you, you learn some about me, and then we schedule some time to be intentional about your wellness journey. During the time, it's about education and empowerment. You are your own best doctor from within. So I'm literally someone who is just intentional in the space and drawing questions out of you to get you further on your wellness journey. Sessions are typically starting at $80, but if you mention Kwanzaa 2020, we're gonna go ahead and take 20% off. It's about getting you well so that we can be well, right? Kuji Chagalia and Ujima, collective responsibility. So grateful for the opportunity to support you in your wellness journey. If you're interested, go to my website, spiritoverfleshllc.com. There's a button that says, let's connect, fill out the form, and I'll get right back to you. Again, that's spiritoverfleshllc.com. I look forward to supporting you in your wellness journey and healing through words. Are 
Are you heading out of town or have a special occasion? What about birthdays, anniversaries, or reunions? Get the best deals and inexpensive rental car rates, mid-sized sedans, compact cars, and more. We have a variety of fleet vehicles to accommodate any and all of your rental car needs. Make a reservation today at your local budget rental car on Hamilton Road in Whitehall. Call 614-863-7500. I'm Carla and my sister Karen and I own two natural sisters. We've been in business for five years and we sell a line of natural bath body and candle products. Let's take a look. Follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Two Natural Sisters. All items that are in stock will be shipped within 24 to 48 hours. As a promotional item, we offer a CD of black romantic poetry of self-love and coupled love and 50% discount on Sister Locks, Brother Locks by consultant Sapphire Donetta Mahati. If you have any questions, you can reach us at customercare at twonaturalsisters.com. Enjoy and happy Kwanzaa. What's going on? My name is Doe. I am the owner and creator of Madeline Jen. Madeline Jen is best described as a celebratory art experience that exudes hella blackness. Initially, the company was founded to provide a luxurious but affordable art experience and it since transformed itself into something a bit more spiritual. By walking in what I believe to be my truth, I've been able to get in contact with my ancestors and use my platform and my art, my gift, to tell their untold stories. I do that by using different textures, by utilizing different mediums, colors, and just making things pop out so that it's open for interpretation. I love, 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 love creating. And I can't wait to be of service to you. Thank you. I am a genius. My ancestors were geniuses. My ancestors have made me a genius in all that I think, say, and do. I must declare myself a genius. I am a genius. Whenever I am myself, I practice my geniusness and do great things. All my thoughts, choices, and deeds must express my geniusness. I am a genius. My decisions must always be in the best interest of myself, my family, my people, and my God. Only then will I and everyone I know know that I am a genius. I am a genius. At all times, my geniusness must reflect my culture. My geniusness must serve my God. My geniusness must make me be one in love and harmony with my family. My geniusness must protect my people. Yes, yes at all times, I must demonstrate excellence because I am a genius. The Purpose Driven Society is a black owned, woman owned business local to Columbus who creates accessories that have intentional messaging. Our specialty are buttons. Buttons can be weared anywhere, on a shirt, on a book bag, on a hat. The beautiful thing about buttons is that you can change them and switch it up depending on your mood or the day. For election day, we wore a very intentional button. On my book bag, my student's book bag, it says, you are already intelligent, educate yourself. Buttons are empowering with the messages that we create. Again, we do them very intentionally. At the Purpose Driven Society, we're minding our black owned business and hope that you'll help mind ours too by doing business with us. Our buttons go for $3 for one, five for two, $7 for three. But if you mention Kwanzaa 2020, 
we're doing a special where you'll get a, an assortment of buttons for just $20 and we'll ship anywhere in the country. So again, that's The Purpose Driven Society. We can be re reached at thepurposedrivensociety at outlook.com. Send us an email and we will put together a very intentional bag of buttons for you and ship it straight to your home. Happy Kwanzaa. Thanks for doing business with us.